Welcome to a lesson on Bernoulli differential equations. A differential equation in this form here, where n is any real number, is a Bernoulli differential equation. Notice if n is equal to zero or one, we would have a linear first order differential equation. So for this video, we're we'll looking at values of n that are greater than one. So if we recognize that a differential equation fits this form, then to solve the Bernoulli equation, we're going to perform a substitution, which will be v equals y raised to the power of one minus n. After performing this substitution, we'll solve the resulting linear first order differential equation. Then after we solve for v, we can determine the solution to the original differential equation, which will be to solve for y. So let's take a look at our first example. The first step is to recognize that the given differential equation does fit the form of a Bernoulli differential equation, or this form here. Also notice here we have y to the n, so in this case, n is equal to two. So once we know n is equal to two, we can determine v using the formula v equals y raised to the power of one minus n. So if n is two, we would have v equals y raised to the power of one minus two, or y to the negative one, which is the same as one over y. Notice that v and y are reciprocals, and since we have to perform a substitution in the differential equation for both y here and here, as well as y prime, we actually want to solve this equation for y. Again, since they're reciprocals, we can say that y is equal to one over v, or v to the negative one. So again, we know y equals v to the negative one, and now we also have to determine y prime, which is actually dy dx, not dy dv. So we'll have to perform implicit differentiation here. So y prime is gonna be equal to negative one times v to the negative two, or negative v to the negative two times dv dx. Again, we're applying the chain rule here because we want the derivative in terms of x, not just v. And now we'll go ahead and perform the substitution. So y prime or dy dx is gonna be all of this plus x times y, which is v to the negative one, equals x times y squared, which would be v to the negative two. Now that we performed this substitution, this is now a linear first order differential equation, which we'll now solve for v. But we do need the equation in this form here in order to determine the integrating factor given here in green. So the first step here, we want this first term to be dv dx. So now we'll divide everything by negative v to the negative two. So this simplifies to dv dx. Next notice here we'll have plus a negative, so we'll just write minus x. Subtracting the exponents, we would have negative one minus negative two, which will give us v to the positive one. And on the right side, this just simplifies to negative x. Now that we have a linear first order differential equation, we want to find our integrating factor, which will multiply both sides of this equation by, which is going to be e raised to the power of the integral of p of x integrated with respects to x. So in this case, p of x is going to be just negative x. So the integrating factor mu of x is going to be equal to e raised to the power of the integral of negative x dx, so mu of x is just equal to e raised to the power of, this would be negative x squared divided by two. Now we'll multiply both sides of this differential equation by the integrating factor. Let's go ahead and do that on the next slide. Now let's go ahead and distribute. Now 
Now remember when solving a linear first order differential equation, the left side of this equation here is always going to be equal to the derivative of the product of the integrating factor in y, or in this case, v. So this is equal to the derivative of e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by two. Again, normally it's times y, but in this case it's times v. And we can easily verify this if we apply that product rule here. But because it's equal to the left side, it's also equal to the right side of this equation, so we can say it's also equal to negative x e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by two. And now if we integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x, we can then solve for v and then go back and solve for y. So now we'll integrate this with respect to x on the left side the integral and derivative undo each other, so we're just left with e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by two times v equals, on the right side, this may look like it's going to require integration by parts, but we can actually just use substitution. If we let u equal negative x squared divided by two, notice that differential u is equal to just negative x dx. So in terms of u, this is just the integral of e to the u du, giving us e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by two plus c. And now we can solve this for v by dividing everything by e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by two. So this simplifies to v, this simplifies to one, plus if we move this up into the numerator, it's going to change the sign of the exponent, so we would have c times e raised to the power of x squared divided by two. But now be careful here, we're not done. Remember, we're trying to solve for y, not v. So let's finish this on the next slide. Remember we said earlier that v was equal to one over y or that these two are reciprocals of one another. So we can also say that y is equal to one over v. So if they're reciprocals, then y is equal to the reciprocal of this, which would just be one divided by the quantity one plus c times e raised to the power of x squared divided by two. So this would be the solution to the original Bernoulli differential equation. Now let's finish by taking a look at this graphically. If we were to graph the original differential equation, it would produce the following red slope field. And here's our general solution that we just found. So I selected the following values of C to graph just a few of the solutions of the family of solutions for this differential equation. So each C produced one of the graphs below, which represents one of the many solutions to the given differential equation. Okay, we'll take a look at another example in the next video. I hope you found this helpful.